Let's get straight to the thumbnail, ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk about how you can get a brand new alto saxophone for $36. I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to show you how you can actually make a profit off of what's going on right now. So I looked at the cheapest saxophone that's on Amazon and it cost $186. It's made by this company called Glory. And I figured, you know what? Why don't I try this thing just to see what's what? But a friend of mine wanted to get a saxophone. He has less than stellar credit, no credit card. So I was like, look, I'll buy something. If it's cool, then you just pay me for it and I'll give it to you. If not, then I'll just send it back, get my money back. No harm, no foul. He wanted the best version of the cheapest saxophone that's there. I'm assuming that the differences are this case and uh, the finish that's on the saxophone. So more than likely, it's just cosmetic in this price range anyway. However, let's go back to the $186 saxophone. If you open up an Amazon credit card, they give you 150 bucks. So you wind up getting a brand new saxophone for $36.11. And if I was smart, if I had half a brain, I would have just done that and just sold it to this dude for $240. Because the one that he wants, the fanciest version of the cheapest saxophone, costs $240. I make myself a nice profit. You can do that also. In this video, I'm going to review the $240 saxophone. I'm assuming that the difference is mostly cosmetic in this price range anyway, and this case that you get. So the $240 minus the $150 leaves me with a $90 saxophone that I'm going to review for you guys right now. This thing looks amazing, and let's see if I'm going to either keep it myself, sell it to this guy, or send it back to Amazon. For you tenor players out there, I finally have my tenor saxophone altissimo book that's available as a digital purchase. I will put a link in the description below. Let's get to it. Nicely packaged. It also comes with one of these things, but I am not a fan of these because they just leave lint and stuff all over the place. So, all right, so you get two of these backpack straps, ladies and gentlemen. You get 10 reeds, a flock of geese, a screwdriver, some tweezers, a neck strap, white gloves, cork grease, and a polishing cloth. And here you get some mouthpiece cushions. Let's take a look at some of the height adjustability that we have with this instrument. So we got the low B flat, low B. We got this other one here. We got it on the low C. We got it on the low E flat here. You can adjust the thumb hook. We have adjustability on the G sharp. We can adjust this F here. You can see we have a high F sharp key on this. We have really fancy engraving. We even have an adjustable front F key here. You can see how high the right hand stack is off of the saxophone. You can also see how freakishly high these keys are. This one is a little crooked, but this is like way, way high. You can see how thick these pads are, and they're already sticking and warping around the tone holes, which is terrible and very expensive and kind of gives this saxophone a failing grade. But as far as cosmetically, this thing definitely gets an A minus. It looks beautiful and it functions as an actual saxophone. Thank <laughs> you. 
pretty extreme difference between the open C sharp and the middle D. I'm going to give this thing a bunch of different ratings and depending on what it is that you're looking for in a saxophone, then we're going to talk about whether something like this is for you. But what this instrument does well, it does very well. And what it does badly, as you would expect, it does catastrophically badly. Let me play a B flat scale. This is a concert D flat, so B flat for alto. I have a tuner here on the side I'm going to go through and I'm going to pretty much try and figure out where every note is. <laughs> Okay, the low B flat is almost 40 cents sharp. <laughs> almost all the other notes are actually pretty good and pretty close. I noticed that it gets really, really stuffy down at the bottom, more so than other instruments that are below $1,000. Okay, uh, let's try a B scale. <laughs> The low C is really nice. It's definitely workable, but the C sharp, the low B, and the low B flat is really one of the big reasons why this thing is stuck at a C minus. The middle is really good. It's really good. I imagine if you're a weekend warrior, you might want to seriously consider something like this. The biggest issue is ultimately going to be how fast you make progress on saxophone, which is going to be very fast because it's a very easy instrument to get started with. So in my opinion, very quickly, you're going to outgrow this instrument. Then you have to ask yourself, is it worth the $240? At $36 through $90, this thing, it's hard to argue against it at that price. And at the very least, it makes for a nice decorative ornament. And you might think I'm being funny by saying that, but I'm not. This thing's best attribute is the way that it looks. It looks really good. And if you can pick up a decorative ornament for $40 or less to $90, you probably have a vase or balls in your house that costs more than that. And this thing actually functions in what it's intended to do. It's actually pretty good. It could be so much better, but so far I'm still riding at the whole C minus thing. This is advertised as a professional saxophone, which it absolutely positively is not. And if I'm going to compare it as a professional saxophone, then it definitely gets an F minus, F minus completely. One of the biggest issues are these side keys here. They are way high. This E here, I keep hitting the side C thinking it's this key. The ergonomics, other than that, actually feel okay enough. The neck requires a phenomenal amount of effort to actually get on the saxophone. So for me, I always tell people, $1,000 to $2,000 is really where you want to start when it comes to a saxophone. Maybe you don't have that money right now. When you math it up over four years, you're looking at $21 a month to $41 a month, monthly over four years. That's 
really affordable for a saxophone, especially when it's going to dare to call itself a professional. Plus, this thing is definitely missing the research and development that goes into making sure that those notes aren't doing what they're doing and making sure that these side keys aren't in such a horrible position. I mean, it makes it, <laughs> it it's just, it's awful, the side keys. Okay, well, let me play a little bit more. So I like to give the manufacturers the benefit of the doubt. I don't work for this company. I'm not endorsed. They did not give me this for free so I can make a video. I bought this with my own money to look out for my friend. Now I'm a professional saxophone player. So if I were to go out and I had to gig on this instrument, I'm going to avoid that stuff so I just don't sound bad. <laughs> Okay, so as a follow-up, ladies and gentlemen, my overall grade for this thing is a C minus. I mean, it's definitely a very cool looking saxophone. It's definitely very capable. What it does well, it does very well, but its problems ultimately are gonna wind up costing you more money than what this thing is worth. Already since I've been playing it, it's been like a day and a half and the pads are already starting to stick like in a bad way. Imagine if getting four new tires cost more than what your car was worth and you could just buy a new car. I mean, you just buy a new car. So it becomes disposable in that regard. So ultimately, when it comes to all of these kinds of saxophones, under $1,000, they're all technically bad investments. If you can score one of these in the $36 to $90 price range with that Amazon um, credit card discount of $150, bucks, then... It's hard for me to argue against it, but would I feel comfortable playing this instrument on a gig? No, because I play all the notes. <laughs> and ultimately, if the pads are gonna wind up sticking like this, then it's just gonna, it's gonna be a problem. And people are gonna think it's me and not the saxophone. Okay, so I'm gonna have this for at least a couple weeks, I think, until I find out what my friend really wants to do. I don't recommend that he actually get the saxophone. I think it's just a much better investment to do installment plans with the $1,000 to $2,000 range. You do that over four years and you're looking at anywhere from $21 to $41 a month on what is a saxophone that a guy like me would have no problems playing on a gig, okay? And plus it's the kind of saxophone that young kids, beginners, people can grow into and have for the rest of their life and be able to sell it for what you paid for it because instruments like those retain their value. This, unfortunately, is disposable. I love the way this thing looks. It's fun to manipulate this thing. <laughs> okay, well, let me play a little bit more. So I like to give the manufacturers the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Thank you. 